What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to build this domain name lookup tool for Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this domain name lookup tool. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to download a totally free PDF copy of my Kinter widget quick reference guide book. Thing is awesome, 150 pages of every single Kinter widget. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book and download that for free. And while you're there, check out membership in tkinter.com and get all my courses and videos for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. It's all my Kinter courses and videos, one low price, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this little tool that looks up domain names and returns the DNS who has information about them. So, you know, I've got Google here. You can see, it doesn't say a whole lot, Google LLC. In this case, it's Google. They've got it all privacy done. I could do my codeme.com website. Same deal. I've got privacy stuff engaged. So it says Reykjavik, Iceland. I'm obviously not in Iceland. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of cool. But it also shows you interesting stuff like the registrar being named cheap, the expiration date and the creation date, which is very useful. The different name servers, which is also useful and all kinds of cool stuff. So this is what we're going to build today. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got some basic starter code that we've always got. I'm calling it who.py. And the first thing we need to do is import who is. And this doesn't come with Python. We have to actually install it. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory. And let's go pip install Python dash who is. I've already got this, so it's gonna be like, hey, you've already got it, but it will install on your computer and you're good to go. So, all right, let's head back over here and let's build out our GUI. So first thing we want is a little label frame that we can put an entry box in that we can type in a domain name. So I'm gonna call this my underscore frame. And this is gonna be a label frame. And we wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal lookup domain name, something like that. And let's go my underscore frame dot pack and give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, so inside of this, we want an entry box that we could type a domain name in. So I'm just gonna call this my entry. And this is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in my underscore frame. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and like a size of 18 to make the box a little bigger. So let's go my underscore entry. We wanna grid this guy. I wanna put it in row zero, column zero. And let's also give this a pad Y of like 10 and a pad X of 10 to give it some padding around there. So, okay, that looks good. Now we also want a button so we can click to actually look the thing up. I'm gonna call this my underscore button. And it's gonna be a button. We wanna put it in again, my frame. And we want the text to say, look up domain, I guess. And let's give this a command of lookup. Now we don't have this lookup function just yet, but we'll create it in just a second. So again, we want a my underscore button dot grid this guy onto the screen too. He also goes in, or she, I guess, row zero, column one this time. And let's give this a pad X of 10 to give it a little bit more padding. Okay, that looks good. So underneath all this, we want a text box so that we can return the results. So I'm gonna call this my underscore text. And this is gonna be a text box. We wanna put it in root. And let's give this a width of like 50. That looks good. Now let's my underscore text dot pack. And I don't think we need to give it any padding because we gave the frame padding. And so that will give a little padding to this as well. So, okay, that looks good. I think that's all there is to that. So now let's come up here and create that lookup function real quick. Let's just define lookup. And for now, let's just pass. So let's save this and take a look at this, make sure we didn't mess anything up here. Head back over here and let's run python who.py. And when we do, we see, okay, this is a little bit not big enough. So let's increase the size of that. Let's make this 550. Save this, run it again. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we just need to be able to type something in here and look it up. So how do we do that? Well, super easy. We're going to use that who is library that we installed earlier. And the first thing we want to do every time we click a button, we want to delete whatever's in the text box, right? So if we click it several times, every time we want to delete the text that was there and put new stuff in. So let's go uh, delete text in box. So let's go my underscore text dot delete. And we want to delete from position 1.0 to end. Okay. Now let's get domain info. So 
first let's grab the domain name. So I'm just going to call this domain and this is going to be my underscore entry dot get going to get whatever's in that entry box. Now let's actually do something with that information. Let's look it up. So to do that, I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call it domain underscore info. This is the information that's going to be returned. And we just call who is dot who is and then just pass in our domain, which is this guy right here. So that will return a whole bunch of stuff. And let's look and see exactly what it returns. So let's put output to text box. So let's go my underscore text dot insert. And where do we want to insert this? We want to insert it at the very top. So 1.0. And what do we want to put in there? Let's just put in our domain info for now. We're gonna to have to tweak this. But let's go ahead and look and see what this returns right off the bat. So go ahead and save this come back over here, run it one more time. And let's type in I don't know, google.com. And let's look it up. And you'll see this is returning a Python dictionary, right? So curly brackets mean dictionary. And it's got all kinds of stuff. And you can see there's key value pairs. So there's the key, there's the value, there's the key, there's the value. So we need to loop through here and pull out the keys and the values and just print them onto the screen. So we could do that with a basic for loop, super easy. So let's say uh, loop the output something like that. So let's go for key and value because we want both of them. And you can call these anything you want, but key value is what they are. So I'm going to call them key value just so it's easier to keep track of. And we want to look up in domain underscore info dot items, right? So we can do that. This will loop through every one of those items and output a key value pair. So what do we want to actually do with this information? Well, let's tab this over. We want to output it onto the screen, but it's not going to be domain info anymore. It's going to be a key or a value, right? So let's create an F string. And Let's pass in the key and then what, like a colon or something to differentiate them or a, a dash maybe or a couple of pipes, something like that. Let's just go colon. And then we also want the value, right? And now this will just smoosh everything up on the screen. I also kind of want to add a couple of line breaks. So we could just go like that. That will add a couple of line breaks. So Okay, that looks pretty good. I think that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and save this run it one more time and see how we did. So let's type in tkinder.com. Look up domain name, boom, country Iceland. I don't live in Iceland. That's a privacy protection guard thing. Uh, postal code 101. That's not true either. Uh, Reykjavik. I do not live in Reykjavik. But again, privacy. So you can see name is redacted for privacy. Unsigned. And then here is some emails for name cheap, the status are name servers, expiration date 2023. Oh, don't have to renew it for quite some time. <laughs> Creation date 2016. Man, have I owned that thing for what, four or five, six years? Hmm. I guess so. <laughs> the last updated date, who is server name cheap, the registrar name cheap, I use name cheap for all my domain names. And uh, that's it. So very cool, very easy. There's all kinds of reasons why you want might want to do this. You might want to, you know, create a little tool that says, hey, our domain names available to purchase. Well, this one obviously isn't because it's already been registered. You could use that for that. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff and really cool. So if we want to go over and just type in Python, who is you can look at the documentation for this. There's not a lot in here. There's not really much information here. But if you want to read it, there it is. We pretty much covered everything there is to cover. But you know, some people like to look at the documentation and I aim to please. And so there you go. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out tkinter.com. We can use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. So it's access to all my Kinter courses, hundreds of videos and the PDF version of my Kinter book. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com. And I'll see you in the next video.